Hello from the kitchen in Jerome, Arizona. I just posted something on the old Facebooks and I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if that's enough. So here's my video response to the post and I'm about to say a, a, a naughty word. So if you're a child, put your hands over your ears or if you're someone easily offended, put your hands over your ears, or just yeah, turn it off, whatever you would like to do. Anyway, so <clears throat> the word that they put up was, or phrase, was unfuck with the bull. <laughs> okay, so I saw that and I thought, now nah, that's funny. So, and then I saw other people's responses to it and, oh, I'm working on this, or I wish I had this, or oh, this is a life goal, or something to that effect. So I put up my little two cents and saying that uh, that's our, that's the absolute, that's, that's our true nature. The absolute being the very tip top of the whole thing. If you are on some sort of path of enlightenment or self-awareness, spiritual awakening, whatever you want to call it, we'll call it the absolute. So that part of us, <laughs> uh, right now maybe we're not quite in tune with that so we create some sort of a goal to be that or be more of that or be more like that or um, connect with that part of ourselves and when we talk about self we have to look at what is self or who am i what is the self that we're talking about if we're talking about the self of robert the brain in its head and an identification of Robert. Oh, he's an artist. He's a musician. He used to be a, a user experience designer. Um, he likes cats and uh, chocolate and, you know, okay, so that that's Robert. And I came from Upland, California, and uh, I have a lot of opinions about things and and I have my thoughts and my feelings and my expressions and and uh, my authentic self and all of these things that go along with being Robert okay so and also my body this body is is part of who I am that's what I say this this body I identify with that body I identify with uh, my senses I identify with my emotional my emotions my thoughts my feelings my story my past so in looking at things that way through that lens if you will then I could say that Robert okay needs to reconnect with his authentic self that being the Robert who is unfuckwithable he is the one that that the Robert that is imperturbable that cannot be upset by anything the Buddha Robert Okay, the one that is absolutely perfect, never bothered by anything, always at bliss, always in bliss rather, and happy and joyful and spreading love and joy and cheer wherever I go. So that can be my objective and my goal. My goal is that I want to connect with that Robert, not the other one who's a jerk, who's mean, who can lose his temper, who gets upset by what other people say who has mood swings, who needs to lose 100 pounds, I can, <laughs> I can say, well, I don't want to identify with that Robert anymore. I only want the Robert that is um, uh, calm, peaceful, quiet, still, happy, joyous, blissful. So this is the Robert that I want. That's somewhere out there, the, the, the authentic Robert, the real Robert, the true self. So, if I'm looking at that through the lens of the Robert here in the mind, and I'm saying I want to have that Robert, not this one, the one that has all of the problems and all the issues, and then how do I get to the perfect, the perfect Robert? Um, what's the journey? Well, we get the spiritual books, we do the meditation, and we do all the work. Sometimes we feel a little bit blissed out. We experience what's called samadhi. Maybe body and mind drops away during our meditation or yoga practice. And we have an experience. And this experience is lovely. 
It's blissful. It's wonderful. It's ecstatic. We float out of the meditation center. We float out of the, the yoga center. And in our glow, our yoga glow, and our meditative glow, then some asshole cuts us off and bang, it's all gone. Hey, you jerk, what are you doing? Oh, where's my yoga glow? Where's my, where's my uh, calm imperturbability? I've lost it. And oh, I'm a bad person. Um, I'm not acting spiritually correct. And I need a, to do a lot of work on myself to one day reach that place of perfect imperturbability where I've reconnected with my Christ consciousness. I am now the Buddha, Robert. Just like our old friend, the Buddha was Siddhartha and then became the Buddha. So since none of us were actually there to talk to him, maybe he, maybe he was more like a real person, like you and me. Maybe he had his ups and downs and throughout his practice he had his samadhis and his awakening. What was his great awakening? The great awakening was, seems like most of the problems I have come from my own mind and how I look at things, right? And I'm not that. I'm not this mind. I'm not the, the feelings, the stories, the emotions. I am not the, the sensations. I am something other than that. And what we need to look at, what is that I that I'm referring to right now? Um, in that journey from the, the head to the heart, in that little journey that we can make, there are levels of consciousness that we can witness, that we can be a witness to. And in these levels of consciousness, as these drop off, we understand even the witnessing consciousness within our practice is also part of mind. And when that falls away, then what? Then who are we? What is it that we're trying to reach? What are we trying to become? This imperturbability that we want, this absolute, this thing that seems to be outside of our reach, is, in actuality, always on. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. This is an aspect of all things. All things are held by this energy. We are that. The only thing that differentiates us between that and this supposed journey that we need to make of self-discovery is, is our mind and how we're thinking. But that doesn't mean we lose mind. That doesn't mean that we need to shut down the mind and close it off and teach it to shut up. That's not what this is about. This is more of your own personal aha moment where everything that I'm blabbing about right now you actually have a direct experience of that in your own way, not my way, not anybody else's way. There's a, a statement that I read recently that's, that's really nice. Don't follow in the footsteps of the masters, but rather seek the truth that they were seeking for themselves. So I hope all this blabbering helps a little bit to explain what I'm talking about, is that that aspect of you that you're looking for, this calm imperturbable Buddha nature is always there. It's always been there. This is innate. This is something you don't have to go looking for, though you will. And that's your right. Read lots of books. Do lots of different stuff. Look. Be curious. Have a great doubt about what it is I'm saying, what everybody else is saying. I'm just here to remind you that what you're looking for is looking for you, and you are that. So I hope that this helps in some way. See you later. More at aquietmind.com if you want to check out podcasts. See ya.